السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين My beloved brothers and sisters When a person is sinning and they're involved in sin They sometimes presume that other people are involved in the same sin I give you an example And these are going to be live examples that are reality. We don't need to have gloves on and we don't need to sugarcoat things. If a person is quietly watching pornography on a daily basis or regular basis, they begin to look at others and think that these people have a similar problem, not realizing that that is not true. Sometimes a person is quietly committing adultery and they are perhaps having an affair with someone Perhaps they're on the phone saying things to a non-mahram. Perhaps they might be stealing some money, eating interests. Perhaps they might be uh, quickly doing something that's wrong, maybe gambling, alcohol, weed. Weed is a major problem. And they begin to think that, no, I'm sure they, you know, these guys are also on weed. You see, you see someone else and you start thinking that they also have the same problem. That is not true. That is not true. Do not judge others based on your actions, your weakness, your sin. And it doesn't mean that others are sinning just because you are sinful. Your standard is not theirs. So don't judge people on your standard of sin if you get what I'm saying. We're not saying that people don't sin. But we are saying that a weakness is when someone is involved in something, shaitan wants to try and make it fair seeming to them by justifying, don't worry man, everyone's doing it today. You want to get married and someone says, no, you got to go out with her for one, two years, make sure everything's, what are you talking about? What are you? Yes, it's important to get to know your spouse, but not to the degree where you're earning the wrath of Allah and the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to realize that it's not everyone who thinks that way. We are believers. We need to understand what is haram is haram. And by the will of Allah, for as long as it's hidden from your eyes, consider it not happening. That's why the Prophet ﷺ says, people will continue to achieve goodness and the mercy of Allah and forgiveness for as long as the sin they may be committing is not done openly, publicly with pride and arrogance. When a man commits adultery quietly and he tiptoes into the home like no one should see him, it's a bad thing, it's a sin, it's a major sin, yes, but it's not as bad as a person who openly sins in front of everyone. Oh, you know, that's my girlfriend, you know, it's okay. And we're walking and we're cruising and we're entering into a place where people know what's going to be happening. No, my brothers, my sisters, let's not give people reason to doubt us, number one, and let's not doubt others, number two. And if a person has to sin because of human weakness, make sure it's not done publicly and make sure you are not proud of it. And don't ever get used to a sin. Don't get used to it. Because did you know, sins are divided into two major categories. It's called a major sin and a minor sin. A major sin are those sins wherein which Allah has mentioned a punishment of. Allah has spoken of its severity. Allah has spoken of a, a, a severe punishment in this world and the hereafter or one of the two of them that's called a major sin for example consumption of intoxicants for example the gambling for example adultery and so on major sins even shirk billah is a major major sin association of partners with Allah major sin and so the other type of sin is a minor sin and if you take a look at it when you repeat a minor sin constantly, it automatically becomes major. Not that the sin is major, but the way you are committing it is major. One might argue, no, you know what? Uh, washing pornography is a minor sin. Oh, are you sure it's a minor sin? Who told you that? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant everyone forgiveness. And the addiction of it, the addiction is major. Did you hear what we just said? The addiction is major. So my brothers, my sisters, don't you agree the globe is suffering? Don't you agree the world has changed? Don't you agree things are uncertain? Haven't you seen people in their 20s and 30s drop dead? May Allah grant us Jannah the day He takes us away. Your tag and your time is already fixed by Allah. You might not make it out of this masjid, nor may I. But 
I want to tell you something. Don't you think that we need to improve ourselves to the degree that we inch towards Allah? Run and flee towards Allah. Indeed, I am a clear cut warner to you. That's the Prophet ﷺ instructing us by the instruction of Allah. Run towards Allah, make haste towards Allah. You don't know every day, every breath that you take is one breath closer to your death. Every day that you have passed, you have crossed is one day closer to your grave. Become a good person. Sins get you nowhere. Ask those who grow older. When they look back at their lives, which were sinful, they regret it. It's a gift of Allah that Allah gave you life enough that you look back and you regret. Why did I have to do all of this? Why? What did I achieve by it? Nothing, nothing at all. Allah's blessing is that you got older age so that you could look back, reflect. That's a sign of forgiveness of Allah. It's a sign of the love of Allah. He gave you time enough that you consolidated your thoughts in the right direction. أَوَلَمْ نُعَمِّذْكُمْ مَا يَتَذَكَّرُ فِيهِ مَنْ تَذَكَّرُ وَجَاءَكُمُ النَّذِيرُ Allah says, did we not give you life enough that he who wanted to take heed would have taken heed? And did the grey hair not come? To you, meaning did the warners not come to you? Did Allah not show you that you're becoming old? Now suddenly your leg is paining. Now you're struggling with your health. Now you're struggling with your libido, whatever else it may be. May Allah grant us goodness and success. All of that is just a sign from Allah to say, oh man, you're coming back to me. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make it easy for us the day he takes us away. So don't get used to the sin because I want to tell you something interesting. The way you led your life is the way you will die. And the way you died is the way you will be resurrected. So if you are not interested in working on your bad habit, you will die in the midst of that bad habit. And when you die in the midst of that bad habit, you are resurrected with the last thing you did. When a man passed away in ihram, the Prophet ﷺ said to his companions, Leave him in this state and in this condition. Let him be buried like this. He will be resurrected on the day of judgment saying, Labbaik, Allahumma labbaik. Imagine what a death. What a death. You died in a good condition, in a haram. The Prophet ﷺ says, إِنَّهُ يُحْشَرُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ مُلَبِّيًا This man is going to be resurrected on the day of judgment in this condition while saying, I am at your service, O Allah. I am at your service, O Allah. لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ Imagine. What a blessed death. You're standing in front of Allah. Your hisab is still about to come and you're busy saying, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ لَبَّيْكَ You are the only one who can say that because you died in the condition. What if you died in another condition? With a bottle, with a throttle. What if you died in another condition? Sitting in front of your phone, all those haram things, nudes. People have a bad habit, a very, very bad habit that needs to be spoken about. More and more people are asking me these questions and not just me, a lot of the ulama, we speak in our circles. People are becoming absurd. They are taking videos and pictures of themselves in the nude and posting them and sending them sometimes to their own spouses claiming it's okay. But your phone is hackable. I can hack it for you in three seconds. Any phone in this masjid, we can whack it in three seconds. We can get into it and take out whatever we want. It's so simple. You just need a little bit of that software and it's over. Aren't you worried? You know why you're worried? Because I told you I can do it. Imagine Rabbul Alameen. For Allah, you are not worried. For me, you are worried. Right? Look at how weak we are. I am telling you there is software to knock anybody's phone and to get what you deleted and you deleted twice and thrice. We can de-encrypt everything in a few seconds for you and I can show it to you. People are worried, right? There is, there is technology, by the way. I'm not telling a lie. There is technology to that degree. But we're not worried about Allah. Rabbul Izzati wal Jalal. 
All I'm saying is just correct your way. You don't need it. Why did you need to video yourself and your own wife doing an intimate act for what? What was it necessary for? How many cases of people on porn sites themselves with their halal spouses, they made their own videos. Someone hacked into the system and found it and sold it and made millions of dollars because of you. You did something silly. It's unnecessary. It is unbefitting a true believer to take those type of videos and images, even if you are trying to justify, to say, you know what, but there was nothing haram happening. Hang on, you're a believer. You don't drop to that level. It's not necessary. It's not needed. You don't need to get a kick out of something of that nature. You get a kick out of turning towards Allah, doing things in a proper, noble way. Why am I saying this? Because sometimes we get used to these type of things. And... It becomes so bad that we become addicted. And like I said, you die in that condition. Imagine a person sitting with his phone doing haram things. Say for example, watching pornography because it's accessible everywhere. And people are justifying it. No, I only do this so that I can get a kick. It's my version of Viagra. What are you talking about? What type of nonsense is this? We are believers in Allah. If you need help, you need help. No problem. You can go and get medication. Don't deny that you need help. It's okay. Many people need help. But this is not the way to help yourself through haram. Dying in that condition, what will happen? The other day I was speaking in the UK at a convention that was entitled social media. And the whole convention, few days, almost a week was all about social media and its use. Because you know we are now living in the age of social media. And you know, one of the interesting factors is when we read the Quran, Allah doesn't leave out anything. You know that Allah doesn't leave out anything. And Allah says that on the day of judgment, he's just going to give you your own book. He will give you your book of deeds that you are writing right now. Right now we are alive and breathing. When you're alive and breathing, what are you doing? You are writing your book. When you are writing your book, let me explain something to you. You can change and delete and add and subtract because Allah has taught us tawbah. The minute I say, oh Allah, forgive me. I was wrong. What I did was wrong. I don't want to do it again and you help me and I regret it. Allah says, you know what? Your sin is wiped out. Immediately, shaitan comes to you and says, no, 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 no. Your sin is not wiped out. It is a bit too big. That's another problem. Shaitan made you commit the sin. When you turn back to Allah and Allah forgave you, he starts making you doubt the mercy of Allah, which is a bigger sin than the initial sin because now you're doubting the quality of Allah and one of his names. So what happens? Allah Almighty will give you your own book. You can write it now, delete, add, subtract, whatever. Add good things and delete bad things. May Allah make it easy for me. When you're given your book, you will be able to see everything you did. You cannot deny anything because it's there, your deeds. Imagine someone showing you CCTV of you and you know you did this. And they say, but why did you do this? You can't come and say, I'm not the one. Like they would normally say, this is doctored. It's not doctored. This is you. May Allah grant us forgiveness. And then Allah will say to you and I, I want you to judge for or against your own self. That's what Allah will say. Here's your deeds. You did them. Have a look at them. Go through them. And I want you to judge for your own self. Where do you think you deserve to go? Subhanallah. I want you all and myself also to think to ourselves for a moment. I know what I've done in my life. I've done so many things. I've even forgotten what I've done. If I tell you and you're about 50 years old, that look, tell me what you've done in your life. You're going to say, you know what? I can't even remember. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. Astaghfiruka lima la a'lamuhu. I seek your forgiveness, O Allah, for that which I don't even know that I committed in terms of sin. Subhanallah. Do you get that? So it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favor upon us that he allows us to chop and change and to say, Oh Allah, what I remember, I seek forgiveness of. What I don't remember, also I seek forgiveness of. But let me have a good book. When you give it to me, I need to have good deeds. I need to have good deeds that are bonus from you. When you seek forgiveness of Allah, Allah says all the bad, I convert it into good. Seek forgiveness. And when you seek forgiveness, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Learn to smile when you think of the mercy of Allah and learn to be concerned when you think of how bad you and I have fared in real life. We are weak. We are insane. One bonus I have and you have 
is that as believers, I don't think a single believer who says La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam would ever sin in defiance of Allah. They would only sin out of human weakness, not defying Allah. What's the meaning of defying Allah? Going to war with Allah. You say, you made this thing haram. I'm going to show you, I'll do it. What are you going to do? Astaghfirullah. A believer will never do that. Never ever. Am I right? If you are sinning, why are you sinning? It's human weakness, right? Isn't that a bonus? Which means, I still worship Allah alone. I consider what is haram as haram. What is halal as halal. There is a sign of qiyamah that people will start considering haram, halal and halal, haram. Sign of the hour. May Allah protect us from it. If something is haram, it is haram and you don't need to justify it. If you're doing it, you can just say, Oh Allah, forgive me. I'm weak. I've done this. I don't want to do it. I will not do it. I'll try my best to stay away from it. Forgive me your mercy. You, you stand a chance. It's the mercy of Allah. But my brothers, my sisters, if you receive your book on that day and you haven't sought forgiveness, there is no one to blame besides yourself. No one. That's why the Prophet used to seek forgiveness every day. So many times, 70 times, up to 100 times a day. He didn't need it. But for us to learn from that. Seek the forgiveness of Allah. Have hope in the mercy of Allah. Do good deeds. Increase your good. Cut the bad. Cut it. Chop it out. You can. You can do it. You don't need to commit adultery. You don't need to watch pornography. You don't need to take that weed. You don't need to be on drugs. You don't need to consume the alcohol. You don't need to visit the parties and the raves where haram things are happening. You don't need it. It does not help you. It will not help you. If anything, it will actually take away your true contentment. You need a life with Allah. You need to settle. You need to understand good things come to those who are disciplined. Why does Allah have five salah compulsory at specific times in a specific way? Because of many reasons. One of them is he wants you to be disciplined. If you want success in this world without discipline, it is not coming. So Allah says, I'll give that to you as a bonus. I just make five salah farad for you. As a bonus, you already have the ingredients of being a successful person. What is the discipline? The discipline is I get up for Salatul Fajr. My discipline. Get up for Salatul Fajr and breathe the air out there and see how focused you feel for the day. Unfortunately, many of us, mashallah, we make Fajr. I'm also weak. Go and sleep after that. Mashallah. Sometimes. It's not haram to sleep after that, but be disciplined. Get up for your day. Allah wants you after Salatul Isha, go home. Allah wants you to spend with your family, your children. May Allah bless us all with good children. Many of us haven't spent time with the kids before you know they're old and they're big. Who brought them up? This, the, the environment out there which is quite challenging. It has all sorts of habits and everything going on. Before you know it, your child is already 15, 16 with all the habits in. And then you say, come here. For the first time in your life, you want to sit with them? It's not fair. You should have been involved from a young age. Listen to the Quran, hifd, say good stories, tell them something, listen to what happened through the day, praise them. Many of us never ever praise our children. We don't even say, well done, mashallah. We only want to pick on them. In today's world, you've got to do the opposite. You've got to praise them where they've done right. And yes, when they've done wrong, you correct them. I'm not saying no, but if you haven't praised them where they were right, they will not take a correction from you. They won't. When you're teaching a child and you say, well done, mashallah, well done, you're doing good, you're doing good. One day when you say, you know, there's a small little thing you need to correct, they'll correct it. They know. May Allah grant us the ability, my brothers and sisters, to focus on our own sins. And may Allah make us such that when we look at other people, we see good people and we're encouraged to, to do good. People lie, so they think everyone lies. No, there are some people, a lot of people who are so truthful, they wouldn't lie. There are so many people who wouldn't commit the sin you are committing. They wouldn't. A lot of the people you see around, they wouldn't do what you may be doing. So don't just look at others and presume. Because that is also a trap of shaitan. He makes you start thinking, no, no problem. You just, you know, it's okay. You're one of them. They're all doing it. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant goodness. There are sins that are prevalent, that are out there. One that comes to my mind right now is the issue of weed. Many people say, no, no, it's okay. It has health benefits. We know of the health benefits of the medicinal aspect of some of what the extract may have. We know about it. And yes, there may be permissibility to use it like other medication. You cannot abuse even your normal painkillers. Even though that's a, a drug that you might get at a pharmacy. If you're abusing that, you're still wrong. You're still considered an addict. Because that, those are also drugs, aren't they? So it doesn't mean you justify the abuse of something just because it has a medicinal property. When it is extracted in liquid form or something. No, I'm here talking about the social use of this weed. Trust me, there is no chance that that is permissible. I can go one step further. You need to, my brothers, out of love, I'm saying this, love for the deen of Allah. I'm going to say something. You need, you need to quit smoking. You have to. Minimum, I'm talking of normal cigarettes here. Minimum is cut it down only for the sake of Allah. That's the minimum. Imagine if you had 20 a day and you say, Ya Allah, I've cut it down for the sake of you, for your sake, my health, my... I remember an old man I used to talk to and he used to ask me, what's the ruling on smoking? I said, well, I, I, according to what I know and what we've learned and what we understand from the Quran and the Sunnah, the amana of the body, you're not allowed to harm it in any way. So this is not permissible. You know what he says? He says, I am so old. He was 80 something. He says, and I've been smoking since I was 20. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> That's, a, that's, that's an exception to the rule. It's not the general rule. Look at the others. Imagine when we, and I'm going to end on this note. When the coronavirus hit us initially, the, the variant was much stronger than now, right? You know that. I know it. Now we're fortunate, alhamdulillah, it's gone much lighter and almost, inshallah, bi'ithnillah, by the power of Allah, eradicated, I hope. My brothers, my sisters, I want to tell you something. A lot of people quit smoking because they were worried about their life suddenly. But the smoking itself, if it was a good thing, would you have ever quit it? No. So why are people saying, no, if you're a smoker, if you're an alcoholic, if you have this and that, these are conditions that make it worse. So they quit and they actually gave up because that was Allah telling them, giving them a chance to say, just quit. I want to tell you, give it up for the sake of Allah, Omicron or Nomicron. Give it up for the sake of Allah. <laughs> There's a disease or no disease. Give it up for Allah. Why do you have to wait for a disease and give it up for the sake of the disease? Give it up for Allah. Minimize it. Cut it down. I met a very good friend of mine a few days ago. And I told him, my brother, you know what? Cut down. Just cut down. I, you are my friend of mine. You know this thing. You, you know that you, you can't avoid the, the, the general cigarette. But cut it down. May Allah Almighty strengthen us all. I think what I've said is not unreasonable and I haven't hit it too hard. I'm just mentioning to you a reality. And I know many friends of mine sitting in this crowd here and I know that you guys do smoke. But I just want to tell you that advice, it stands. Today, tomorrow, whatever day, we should cut it down. We can, if we can eradicate it, Wallahi, perhaps Allah will give you Jannah for that. And if you really, really are struggling, minimum is cut it down a little bit. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen all of us and give us rahmah and barakah. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.